For those of you who are thinking about, you know, hey, where do I begin? Well, you begin with your, what did God put on your heart? What was that? All right. And that's what that whole, remember, back up, find your rhythm. It's like, you know, God put something on my heart. I'm going to go try that. I'll try that. It may work. It may not. All right. But it's something that God put on my heart. It may work for a while. It may work for a season. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's something that God put on your heart for such a time as this. It's an appointed time. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember in the book, I even talk about, you know, this all about timing. Right. Mm -hmm. and I believe there's a drum beat in life for all of us. There's this drum beat. Right. It's constantly going in the background. And I believe God gives us something to do at an appointed time. Mm. It's at that moment. And I've talked to a lot of people who say, you know what? God did put something on my heart and I didn't follow through on that. And I always say, well, you know, we all miss a beat. In drumming, when you're playing, you can hear a drummer when he misses or she misses a beat. Right. And I think it's like that in life. Right. So God puts something on your heart. You were supposed to do it at that appointed time and you missed the beat. Yeah. All right? You missed the beat. So go back and think about those missed beats, those mm. things that God put on your heart at a time you thought, eh, that's not the right time. I've got to yeah. do this. Right? What, a, what a great analogy, the missed beat. Mm. I love that because, you know, it's never too late to start chasing your passion and start doing what's right and yeah. kind of walking walking your dreams out really and reaching yeah. for them. It's never too late. And really, you know, I'm also, we, we homeschooled, well, I home educated my children for 19 years and was working a job at the same time. I teach Spanish at the university level actually. And yeah. that's what I do. That's what funds my, my side ministry here. But, yeah, yeah. but anyway, but once my last launch, just this, this summer, he moved out. My, we have four. Uh -huh. And so I don't even like calling it empty nest because it's truly not an empty nest. It's I not, mean, no. if they're little birds, they are flitting. They're coming back too. Right? <laughs> they do come back. And I love it. And <laughs> it's right. not as messy of a nest, but it's right, right. still not empty by any yeah. stretch. But, right. but I'm so enjoying this time of my life personally. And I feel like... Like there's just, I'm on the brink of something so big. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just such a wonderful season for me. And even though I'm obviously a lot older, I'm still, I love to teach like you do, Eli. Yeah. And yeah. it's been such a blessing in my life. But now I'm hosting a podcast, what? Yeah. And yeah. I'm writing books, what? Yeah. You know, all these things that I've loved are finally, I've got a little bit more time to do some of those things. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I feel like I'm really stepping into my calling. And is an issue of timing. Now's the time. And, yes. and I want the listener to be encouraged by that. I know many of them are, they, they feel sad now that their kids are gone. They're, they're like, okay, who am I? What, what do I do now? What do I do? I don't even know my husband. And, and how does all of this work? And they're almost in a crisis mode in some ways. And they're tired and they're weary and they're trying to figure all this out. But there is a it can be a wonderful season and yes. we don't have to, you know, the world might say you're just, you know, withering away, you know, it's kind of all over now. It's a downhill slide. No, there's still so many adventures out there and so many, so many wonderful things to step into. And yes. I'm, I'm so grateful that, that you, sh that you shared that and that you're encouraging the listener in that way to what is it? Was there something along the way that really sparked some energy and enthusiasm and life in your heart? And can you go back and maybe retrieve that and then, yeah. and then walk into it? And I want to know, though, what thoughts, as we're kind of tying back into that renewed mind, what are some of the thoughts that play interference with these four pillars, any of the four pillars? Yeah. What what keeps us, and it could be a big Goliath, maybe it's a little Goliath, I don't know, but what are those thoughts that you've noticed, even in your personal life, or maybe things that your wife has said that are really showstoppers, and they yes. keep you stuck, or mm -hmm. they keep you in this state of inertia, and 
defeat so that yeah. you're afraid or something. What, yep, that's what it. are those thoughts? It's fear. That's it. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's at the top of the list. So in, in my research, so I, I'm actually in sales and sales management. I was a sales manager and now I do research and publish in the areas of sales and sales management. And so as, as you step into that role, just imagine salespeople calling on customers, getting rejections and getting back up and being very persistent and so on. You know, that's part of the lifestyle that I had before I became an academic. And I have a, a real appreciation for that. Similar to entrepreneurs starting businesses. Okay, this didn't work out. Let's try another another thing. But what I've noticed in the research in particular, you know, there are different kinds of fears, obviously. There, you know, there's this fear of success, mm -hmm. right? Fear of failure, right? There's the imposters syndrome. So when you think about that, what I've learned through the research is sometimes people are afraid to start something because they, they fear failure. Right. The other part of that, which was kind of amazing, you can Google all of this. Look at the fear of success. I bet you know some people. I know some people in my network who could be very successful at it, but they fear that success. So there are different kinds of fears. But what does the Bible say about fear? Right. Right. How many times in the Bible do we have something about fear? and not being afraid. I can quote scriptures around that. If we're believers, all right, we walk by faith, not by sight, right? You think about all of those scriptures, we should not be afraid, all right? Even when we succeed, we should not feel like we're an imposter. There's that imposter syndrome. It's like, how did I get there? I'm not supposed to be there. I can't believe I'm here. Oh, they may find me out. I'm not supposed to be here. Think about all those fears. People who have succeeded, Mm -hmm. with imposter syndrome they have succeeded and now they're in front of people and they're uh, applauding them and giving them a standing ovation and even those people right feel imposter syndrome mm -hmm. afraid that they might find out that i'm not qualified even though they're giving you a standing ovation something right. happened there right so in that part of the book i hit that fear of failure right mm -hmm. right i mean spot on I was afraid. <laughs> so my wife and I got married very early and started having children very early. And it was right during the time when I was trying to finish up a, you know, a degree. And I, you know, I had some, I had a couple of false starts and jumped out there. Next thing I know, we had a, a, a fourth child. <laughs> All right. And I was afraid because I had not found my rhythm. Mm 